Welcome to the Treasures Gallery in the National Library of Australia. In our collection we have about 10 million items and we display the very best of that material here in the gallery. Now just recently we've installed some new items and we're going to go and have a look at them today. This document here is evidence of the first piece of writing that we know of by an Indigenous Australian. The manuscript is the only contemporary copy of a letter sent by Bannalong, a leader of the Wongal people, to some people he met in England in the 1790s. Uh, it was done by an unknown scribe. Uh, we don't know who copied it down, uh, but we assume that it's as close as possible to the original letter. Bennelong uh, and his young companion Yemera Wani travelled with Governor Arthur Phillip back to England in 1792. While they were there, they were dressed in contemporary clothes. They met Viscount Sidney, Governor Phillip's influential patron, and they stayed on his estate. Both men fell ill and were cared for by the Viscount's steward, Mr Phillips, and his wife. Sadly, Yemera Wani died. Bennelong returned alone in 1795, and a year later he wrote this letter to the Phillips, thanking them for their care, asking them if they could send him clothes and telling them about what had happened in Sydney while he'd been away. It's incredible that we have this document because Bennelong's one of the most important figures in Australian history and this, is a, this is, gives us a chance to hear him speak for himself, to hear his own words. Okay, so along this wall we have a display of early Australian churches. Uh, now, in colonial Australia, these churches, their, their spires and their steeples would have been the most prominent features on the skyline of pretty much every Australian town and city. The one that we have on the wall here is a depiction of the first St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney, or it was a church at this stage, and that was the first Catholic church in Australia. Um, the foundation stone was laid by Governor Lachlan Macquarie in 1821, I think, uh, but the church was burned down in the 1860s and replaced by the magnificent Gothic Revival Cathedral that's there today. What I find most interesting about this particular work is I think it's the oldest picture we have in our collection done by a woman of an Australian scene. It was done by Amelia Rusden. However, maybe there's something in the collection that's a little bit older, but I'd be happy to be corrected. Let's go and have a look at some of the other churches down here. Some of the oldest Anglican church buildings were designed by the convict architect Francis Greenway, who was the first uh, New South Wales government architect. Um, behind me here, there's St Matthew's, which is now the oldest Anglican church building in Australia, and St James's in the middle of Sydney, which for about 30 years was the tallest building in Australia. Now, Greenway's uh, style was neoclassical, uh, it was very pared back, and architectural historians now recognise it as a landmark in Australian architectural history. However, Greenway's style soon became passé, and in the late 19th century, the Gothic Revival became the architectural style of choice for Christian churches in Australia. This one is uh, St John's in Camden, and it was one of the first built in Australia. And the Gothic Revival drew on romantic and picturesque comparisons with European that come from European medieval architecture. And I think you'll find, if you go through most Australian towns today, there's usually some kind of Gothic Revival church building um, existing still in those towns. So one of the library's most important and beloved collections is the Ellis Rowan Collection, uh, which was acquired for the nation in 1923. Marion Ellis Rowan was an artist and naturalist, and she's most well known for her striking portraits of Australian native plants. Um, which you can see on the wall behind me. In 1889 and 1906, she traveled to Western Australia and the plants that we have installed in the gallery in this particular iteration are, are plants from that particular journey. So in this Olympic year, we thought we'd put in a display about an Australian champion. Behind me is a picture of Fanny Durack, who was the first woman to win an Olympic gold medal for Australia. And she did this in the 1912 Stockholm Olympics. Durak was an amateur swimming champion in Australia in an era where women weren't allowed to swim with men due to social conventions. But such was her popularity that it was decided she would be allowed to swim in the Stockholm Games and she came home with that gold medal which we also have on display here in the Treasures Gallery out the front in the Realia Wall. Also in this showcase we have a display about the global influenza pandemic that took place around about 1918 to 1920. It was better known as the Spanish flu and that's because most of the first reported cases were in Spain. The flu came to Australia in 1919 uh, and a major public health awareness campaign was launched. Quarantine measures were set up, uh, there was education about hygiene and also people were told to wear white masks. Sound familiar? 
Uh, one of the things in this particular case is an SOS sign that people with the flu were told to put on their doors so health officials could help them um, bring groceries to their place and, and bring medicine and bring assistance without them having to leave the house and infect other people. The final object in this showcase is this king plate behind me, which was presented to the First Nations man known as Bobby. Bobby worked at the Yolga Bar station in northern New South Wales, and the king plate was presented by Edward Ogilvie, the station owner, and Donald Cameron, who was also the father of Mary Gilmore, the well-known Australian writer and activist. And in fact, Gilmore presented this king plate to the library, as well as this description uh, about its history and provenance. King plates were usually presented to First Nations people identified as leaders by station owners and uh, early settlers. They were meant to be a form of protection um, and also show that they, a form of respect as well, but for many First Nations people, they symbolise much more. They symbolise the loss of their land um, and the loss of their culture. This particular showcase is about the love story between Joseph and Enid Lyons. Joseph was the first Tasmanian-born Australian Prime Minister, uh, and in 1932, when he became Prime Minister, his first order of business to, was to write this rather touching letter to his wife, Enid. Now, together they had 12 children. Unfortunately, only 11 survived infancy, but you can see all of them in this particular shot here at the lodge in Canberra, uh, sometime after Joseph became Prime Minister. Now, he died rather unexpectedly in 1939, and four years later, Enid became a trailblazer of her own when she became the first woman elected to the House of Representatives. She didn't stop there, though, because she also became the first woman to be a member of the federal cabinet. What's particularly interesting to me about this letter is it's a rather private moment between two very, very important figures in Australian political history. Uh, the first part of the letter reads, my first act as Prime Minister is to write to you because whatever honours or distinctions come are ours, not mine. Girl, we've seen some changes and we've lived full lives in our years of married life. So in the Treasures Gallery, we do display a lot of different types of material. We display oil paintings, rare books, maps, rare prints and watercolours, but we also display ephemera. Now, the library has been actively uh, collecting ephemera since the 1960s. And ephemera can be postcards, uh, birthday cards, menus, uh, junk mail, all that kind of material that may seem ephemeral, uh, but it can provide an important record about significant events. One such significant event was the Australian Marriage Law Postal Survey, which took part in 2017. Australians were asked whether they thought same-sex couples should be allowed to marry. 16 million people uh, received the vote. About four-fifths of those act actually decided to vote, and 62% said yes, they would support same-sex couples being married. Another event that's represented in our ephemera collection is the Sydney 2000 Paralympics, which was seen by a lot of sports commentators as a key moment in the Paralympic movement. Australian athlete Kurt Fernley described the event as bringing a new standard of professionalism to Paralympic sport. Some of the items that we have on display from our ephemera collection include a braille map of the Sydney Olympic Village, uh, a Paralympic program, some event tickets, and a toy, Lizzie, who was the Paralympic Games mascot. 